Hi, I'm Nancy Scott with Masterpiece Quilting. I am so excited to see you here as part of Annie's YouTube channel. Today, I'm going to be showing you how to make this beautiful Halloween flight block. This absolutely stunning block is perfect for all of your Halloween and fall needs, and it is really easy to make. There are a few techniques that I'm gonna to demonstrate today that take you through how to make this block. One of the things that we're gonna be demoing is how to fussy cut, how to frame a center block, making both half square triangle units and flying geese units, as well as stitch and flip blocks or stitch and flip corners, and then pressing to nest. Hey, we've got a lot to cover today, so let's just dive right into making this beautiful block. The first thing I wanna talk about are the fabrics that you're going to need. If you haven't already done so, make sure you download or find the printed instructions for the block, and that's gonna give you the materials list. The specific fabrics that we need, we're gonna be using five different ones in this block. First of all, we're gonna start with our focal print. And in this case, I chose a moth-looking Halloween print that's got some really cute little skulls on it and then some beady little bad eyes. Hey, how much more fun can that be for Halloween? Pairing that with a dark or a black, and the black that I chose has some little white specks in it, kind of mirrors the little bit of white specks that are around the moth motif. Next, I'm going with an orange that matches well with my background color. Oranges are, there's a lot of different oranges, so make sure you've got one that coordinates really well with the background on your fabric. I decided to go with a pink accent fabric because it's matching the pink just perfectly that's right there in the eyes. And then we need a neutral. Grays, creams, beiges, whites, anything that would be the neutral. Gray seemed to pull this one together the best. I'd auditioned white with it, but it was just a little bit stark. So this really pretty gray tone all works perfect for pulling everything together. Those are the five fabrics that you need. Next, cutting instructions. How do we go ahead and cut all the pieces that we need to make this block? The cutting instructions are really pretty straightforward for this block. I'm gonna come back and demo the fussy cutting, but let's just move down through the list. From the black, we're going to need one and a half inch by four and a half inch strips, one and a half by six and a half inch strips, and then 16 one and a half inch squares. From our orange fabric, we'll need four two and a half inch squares, and then two three and seven eighths inch squares. From the pink, we're gonna need four three and seven eighths inch squares, and then we're gonna cut those in half on one diagonal to make eight rectangles, and then we'll need an additional two three and seven eighths inch squares. And from our gray, we'll have one seven and a quarter inch square that we subcut on both diagonals to make four E triangles. All pretty standard, cutting squares and then dividing them accordingly, either on one or both diagonals. Now, fussy cutting out that motif. This is what really makes the block. Yes, fussy cutting does take a little bit more time, but the look, oh my goodness, the look is so stunning. So I have my focal fabric right here, and what I am doing is we have a lot of the moth motifs and the eyes. The eyes are all different colors. We've got green, we've got orange, we've got pink, we've got kind of a reddish color. I decided to use the pink for this particular block. So what I'm gonna do is orient the fabric so that I can find one of my little pink moths right here. And as I'm working with this fabric, you may notice that, you know, it's a little stiff. It's not as soft as what the fabric normally is. That's because the first thing that I did was when I pressed it, I used a little bit of spray starch on it just to give it some extra body. 
any type of spray product will work. So depending on whether or not you like starch, starch alternatives, this is what I just happen to have. Um, this is a ironing spray technically. So that's what I used. And the reason that I did that, when we're cutting, fussy cutting this, we're actually gonna be cutting on the bias. In order to get the exact motif that we want, we're gonna be exposing bias edges. And what I wanna make sure is that we don't get any extra stretch out of those bias edges as we're working with them. So the easiest way to do that was to use the setting spray or ironing spray to give that fabric just a little bit more body before we start working with it. Okay, now I need a four and a half inch square from this fabric. What I'm using is a ruler that is designed actually for fussy cutting where we've got the center specifically defined so that I can find the center of my motif. And then there are little holes in the grid where I can mark my corners and then come back and cut. So what I'm gonna do is line up the center of the grid exactly in the center of the motif. And I can use my diagonal lines and my straight up and down lines to lock in that orientation. After I have the grid positioned exactly where I want it, I wanna grab a marking pen, and I'm actually going with a pigment pen because we're gonna be marking right on the very corners where I cut off, but I wanna make sure that I can see it well. And I'm looking for we're cutting a four and a half inch square. So I'm looking for the four and a half inch marks here. And I'm gonna mark all four corners. I've got all four corners. Those are gonna be my orientation points that I'm going to be lining up to cut from. So I'm gonna pull the grid off identify where my four points are, and then still using this grid, but now switching it from a layout grid to an actual cutting grid, line up, and I actually cut past one of the dots and then let me flip this around. When you're cutting, it's easier to reposition the fabric than it is to try to reposition your body. We always want to cut so that we're cutting away from ourselves. Line up there, I can get the big piece out of the way and then come back in. Again, double checking my orientation there and then make my final trim. And there we go. I can either see you with the glasses off, or if I put them on, I can see what I'm cutting. But anyway, hey, it's just part of, uh, part of this stage of life. But we've got a four and a half inch fussy cut square now. And by stabilizing those edges with that spray starch, I don't have to worry as much about them wanting to stretch out because they are on the diagonal. So, fussy cutting. Yes, it does take a little bit more time, but isn't this little motif so cute? And he's gonna look even cuter as we assemble him into the block. The first technique that we're going to work on as we're assembling the block is framing the center square. And that's a really easy process where we're going to be stitching our B and C strips around the fussy cut center square. So we'll start out by joining our A strips or excuse me, our B strips on each side of the A strips. And when we get done with that, it's gonna give us a unit that looks like this. Next, we're gonna be adding the longer strips 
onto the top and the bottom of that unit. And when we get finished, we will end up with a unit that looks like this with side strips and then top and bottom strips. And that finishes out the framing of the square. Next, we're gonna add the flip and stitch corners to this to complete the center section of the block. The next step has us taking our D squares and we're going to be drawing a diagonal line on the wrong side of each of those. I'm using a fabric friendly pen here, a water erase marker, lining up any of my cutting grids, anything that's got a straight edge, and then just drawing a straight line from corner to corner. And we've got our line right here. That's gonna be our reference line for stitching. Then taking the unit that we just made, positioning the square in one corner, and we wanna have our raw edges lined up with our diagonal running at an angle. I'm gonna put a quick pin in here to hold it. So most importantly, we've got raw edges lined up here on two sides and we have the diagonal in this position. Now our next step is going to be stitching on that line. After we have the square stitched on the diagonal, next we are going to trim it. And I've got a cutting grid with a quarter inch seam allowance. I'm going to line that up right on my stitching. Trim this little dog ear off. And then we will press this open. So these are called stitch and flip corners for a reason. We stitched and then we flip. And I'm going to go ahead and press that open. Bring my pressing mat just a little bit closer. I'm going to start out by setting the seam. And then allowing the weight of the iron to push the corner open. And we end up with a unit that looks like this. We're going to repeat that process for all four corners so that we'll end up with the center block. Whoops, let me get him right side up there. There we go. We've got the center block looking like this. Now, if at any stage in the process, your block isn't exactly laying as flat as you would like it to, always stop, give it a good pressing, and if you need to come back over it with just a little bit of starch or some type of a spray, go right ahead. Accuracy is really important and we're building a lot of layers on this block. So sometimes going through and just giving it a good pressing or else using a starch or a starch alternative product definitely helps. At this stage, the other thing that is really important is making sure that each section of the quilt block is the size that it needs to be. If you've assembled a quilt block and you get to the assembly part and things just aren't fitting, that's when you realize that squaring up each step of the way is really important. So at this stage, we wanna make sure that it's measuring six and a half inches square. And I believe I have already trimmed that one. If not, go ahead and just trim everything right to be six and a half inches. So that completes everything that we need for our center square. Next, we're gonna work on our flying geese units. To make our flying geese units, we start out with an E triangle, and we have that in the center. And then we'll be joining our F triangles onto both sides, both short sides of the E triangle. And it does not matter which side you start on, but we're gonna join, first of all, with just a quarter inch seam, one of the triangles, the F triangles, onto the E triangle. 
and we're going to press this out going away from the center. I'm going to set the seam real quick. Again, allowing the weight of the iron just to press that open. So we'll end up with a unit that looks like this. Then we'll be joining the other F triangle onto the opposite side. We'll stitch it in place and then press it out or open also. Let me go ahead and set that seam real quick. And we'll end up with a unit that looks like this. Now we want to make sure that it's the correct size. When we're sewing on these angled edges, sometimes it can be really easy to get a little bit of stretch in there because we are working with a bias, or it can be a little easy to get off with that quarter inch seam. So we want to trim this to being three and a half inches by six and a half inches. And as I'm trimming, I want to make sure that I'm preserving a quarter of an inch here at the top. So while it may be easy to measure from the bottom and come up and trim, we don't want to do that when we're squaring up. We want to start at the top and then measure down. So we have that quarter inch allowance at the top. And I'm actually going to flip my grid around. This particular one has a quarter inch point at it on the 45 degree angles. There we go. So I'm going to trim my top first. Why are we keeping that quarter inch? When we get ready to sew this on to the next one, we're gonna need that quarter inch for our seam allowance. And so that our point comes out exactly the way we want it to. So I'm gonna trim that top, flip it around. Now I'm going for three and a half. I'm gonna line up my three and a half and then trim anything off the bottom. So. If you have to error on one side being a little bit short and one side being a little bit long, always preserve that quarter inch point. That's the most important part here is this quarter inch from that point to the top. And then I just need to make sure that I'm at six and a half inches on my sides. And we are right on six and a half divided by two would be three and a quarter so i'm lining up my three and a quarter inch line right on that point and the only thing i have to trim is just the tips off the edge there we go so we have our three and a half inch by six and a half inch flangish unit we have it trimmed and we're gonna repeat this to make a total of four of them. Next, we'll be making our half square triangle units. Starting out with our G and our H squares, we're going to draw a diagonal line on the wrong side of one of the G squares. Same process as we did earlier, using one of our cutting grids or any type of straight line ruler. And then just drawing a line from corner to corner. That's going to be our stitching, excuse me, that's gonna be our cutting line in this case. Earlier we were using as a stitching line, this time we're using it as a cutting line. We're gonna do that for both of the G squares. And then with right sides together, we're putting our G and our H squares. And we want to make sure that all of our raw edges are lined up. And this is personal preference if you want to pin or if you don't want to pin. Many times as I'm prepping these, I go ahead and put a pin just in the center section to hold them together so that I know that I've got those raw edges lined up and then pinned together. We are going to be stitching a quarter of an inch on each side of that drawn line. 
If this is the first time you've done this before, give yourself a little bit of grace. You're gonna to wanna to line up right on the drawn line and then stitch a quarter of an inch. Do a double check to make sure that you're lined up exactly where you need to be. And you can do that with any of your cutting grids, just putting the quarter inch line right on the drawn line. If you are airing on one side or the other, just really kind of struggling getting that quarter inch to line up exactly right, it is better to be a little too shallow, a little bit too closer to the drawn line than it is to be too far away from it. And the reason is that it's when we get finished with the unit and we press it open if your unit is a little bit too big because your stitch line is a little too shallow it's going to be really easy for you to trim that to size however if your stitch line is too far away from the drawn line a little too deep that means that your finished unit is going to be too small so if you're struggling with getting that quarter inch exactly where you need it to be error on the shallow side so after we have stitched this, next we're just gonna use our cutting grid again. Line up on our stitch line, which should put us right on the drawn line. And with our rotary cutter, cut that apart. And next we're going to press these open. I like to always set my seam first. And again, just using the weight of the iron, let it press over. And if at any stage you're struggling with getting everything pressed nice and flat, again, use a little bit of pressing spray. It always helps. And we are going to want these to be three and a half by three and a half inches when we're finished. On your cutting grid, there should be a 45 degree line. So we're gonna to wanna to line that up on the diagonal seam, right at the three and a half inch. Go side, then across the top, rotate it, and then do a final rotation real quick to be at three and a half on the bottom side. And I'm just pulling threads off. So that is a good sign that my quarter inch seam was exactly where it needed to be. We're going to repeat this process for all four of the half square triangle units that we're making in this step. We're getting closer to having our block finished. Next, we're going to do flip and stitch corners on each of the flying geese units and the half square triangle units that we just made. So in the same process that we did our earlier flip and stitch units, in this case we're going to be using the little I squares. We're going to start out by drawing a diagonal line on the wrong side of each of them. And since the fabric's dark, you may have to adjust what pencil, pen, writing instrument you're using so that you can make sure that you see that line. We're going to start out with our flying geese units. We've got those already trimmed from our previous step and we're gonna position one of the marked I squares on the pieced corner. Not on the plain fabric corner, but on the pieced corner. And with the same process as before, lining up the raw edges. And then I just put a pin there and we've got the diagonal line running at the angle. We're gonna stitch on that diagonal line and just like before, using our cutting grid, lining up the quarter inch line on our stitching, we're going to trim that away. And I'm going to be left with our little flip out corner. Now, earlier we flipped and pressed everything out. And we're going to do something just a little bit different here because we're doing what we're calling pressing to nest. Thinking ahead on our block, 
we've got two sets of flip and stitch corners that are going to be coming together as we assemble our block. If we had all of our seam allowances pressed the same direction, we would end up with multiple layers of fabric trying to stitch through, which is going to give us a great big bump. So we want to think about our pressing direction in advance. So instead of just pressing this out with all the seam allowances coming out, we actually want to press our seam allowances back towards the center of the block. So on our ironing mat, I'm going to lay my block down, have my little corner laying flat, put the nose of my iron on that corner, and then just work that whole set of seam allowances back towards the center of the block. Yeah, it does seem a little awkward. I'll give you that. If you're feeling really awkward right now, right there with you. But we want to have this all pressed to the back. After you get all of them done, it'll be just a really comfortable process. But yes, it does seem a bit awkward at first. So we're going to repeat that process so that we have all four of our flying geese units with their flip and stitch corners pressed back towards the center of the block. If you're struggling with this a little bit and you know that you didn't quite get everything lined up or you're thinking it looks a little scant or it looks a little full, go back through and double check and make sure that you're measuring three and a half inches by six and a half inches. And we are going to do the exact same process, this time with the half square triangle units. Positioning that flip and stitch on across the diagonal seam. So we've got a diagonal seam going across the diagonal seam. We're going to trim. But this time we're pressing everything out. Same as we did earlier on the flip and stitch corners for the center block. Let our iron do the work. Take those out. Repeat the process on the opposite corner so that we end up with four half square triangle units with their flip and stitch corners, everything pressed out. Let me tidy up real quick here and then we're going to go into laying out our block. The moment you've been waiting for. We've got our center square. Putting our flying geese units on both sides. Putting them at the top and at the bottom. Making sure your orientation is correct. And then lining up the half square triangle units at each of the four corners. And referring to the block diagram, we're going to assemble this in rows. A top row with flying geese and half square triangle units. Bottom row, exact same thing. Center row, flying geese stitched onto both sides of the center unit. So we would have our top row, our center row, and our bottom row. And then you're just going to join all three of those together. I've pressed these seams so that they're going the opposite direction. Just makes things lie a little bit flatter. And as you're stitching, make sure that you're flipping or that you don't let any of those seam allowances flip right here. Otherwise, we'll end up with some really chunky intersections for those stitch and flip corners. And there we go. We have our Halloween flight block finished. This has been a fun block. It's, we went through a lot of techniques and some of these may be new to you. So if you need to go back, watch again, catch up on something, that is perfectly fine. But this is a very versatile block. If you don't wanna do the fussy cutting, if that's too much for you, just substitute any fabric into the center section. That works perfectly fine. Or if Halloween isn't your thing, but you've got a really pretty floral, hey, use that focal fabric. Fussy cut a flower in the center,
pull fabrics that complement and coordinate with that in the same way that we did with this focal fabric and use whatever block you want to make. I'm sure you're going to love this and so are all your friends who see it too. Again, my name is Nancy Scott with Masterpiece Quilting and thank you for being a part of this block demo today. Thank you for being a part of Annie's and I hope you'll join us again for another video on the YouTube channel. Bye-bye.